Well, howdy folks, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if this is your first time. First of all, I'm gonna apologize about the weird looking lighting today. It's really cloudy out there. I think it's gonna rain at any minute, so the lighting looks really funny. But we're not here to talk about the weather. We're here to talk about this. It's the drum synth from Racket. Let's take a look. So first things first, before we get started, I wanted to point out my shirt. It's Luke Skynobber and Darth Fader. And the reason I'm pointing that out is because this shirt is also from Racket. Uh, they're a pretty cool uh, outfit in the UK and they make cool products like this. I've already done a few of theirs, so check out those videos. But real quick, for starters, this is the drum synth. Let's do a little once over on it. You can see it's a pretty simple um, setup here. Very, very well designed. I was super impressed in putting this together. And I'll go ahead and put an overlay on the screen of, of uh, me putting it together. But this has quite a few parts. It's certainly not the most dense kit I've ever built. I've certainly built denser circuits, but it's a lot more parts than like their APC or their Baby 8 or one of those. Um, you have a whole lot of resistors in this thing and they are all kinds of different values. And there are 4K7s and 47Ks in there. So make sure you don't get those confused. Um, but anyway, you solder in all of, you actually start with the ICs and you solder those in, then you solder in all your different resistors, uh, capacitors, diodes, and then you get to more of the actual moving parts. It's got a few switches in there. Um, and then, you know, you kind of solder all those in and, uh, and also all of the, um, all the different potentiometers and jacks and all of that. And uh, it's actually pretty cool. They actually have you um, solder all of the components except for the switches and jacks. And they have you put the panel on and then solder them so that you know that they line up correctly with the panel, um, which is pretty clever. I mean, honestly, it's not the easiest kit I've ever built, but it's certainly not the toughest. The instructions were very easy to follow. Um, it, it's really not harder than any of the other kits. It just has a lot more parts. So it does come with a little quick start guide to get you started. And it also comes with the dongle so you can power it with a nine volt battery. So real quick, let's take a look at the controls here. Okay. So if you look at the kind of top panel here, you've got three switches and then you've got six knobs. You've also got these switches here. One of these is the power switch. And I'm going to go ahead and plug the battery in so I can demonstrate a couple things here. But when you hit the power switch, you'll see the power light will come on and also the LFO over here will, um, the rate will respond to whatever rate the LFO is running at. So um, you get those two lights right away. Okay, as far as the controls here, uh, the switch here we've got, it gives, it gives the VCO a different shape and then the pot right here gives it a pitch. So as you change those shape and pitch, you can get a different sound. And the way that you activate this is you tap it right here where it says drum and underneath there, there's a piezoelectric sensor that actually picks up the vibration and triggers it. So you also have a sensitivity control for that trigger. So by changing that, you can control how hard you have to hit it here, if you can just tap it lightly or if you really have to smack it to get it to trigger. Then right here, you've got a decay knob. That's used for the decay envelope on the sound. So do you want it to end right away or do you want it to gradually fade out? That's what the decay knob does is how, how quickly that sound fades out. Then you've got a sweep control and that's how the pitch sort of sweeps or kind of after the trigger, like what happens. And then you have a switch down here where you can change the direction of the sweep. And um, it's kind of hard to explain, but you can definitely hear it when you play with it by, by changing the intensity or the direction.
And then these final two knobs here control the rate and the intensity of the LFO. I kind of showed that rate earlier, but the LFO will affect, you can use it to like mo modulate the pitch of the drum sounds and then you can change the intensity as to how much you want it uh, to really affect that. But then in addition, you've got a um, wave shape over here for the LFO as well. So you can pick two different waves for the LFO. Now the other switch up on the top here is an attack switch and it's, it just has an on and off position. And what that does, if it's off, you'll just get a real clean drum sound. If you turn it on, you'll get more of like a clicky drum sound, like a tick tick, like right in the, in the sort of um, onset of the drum. So it kind of just gives a little different effect. And so there are a lot of different things that you can do with this little box. And the other thing that's really nice about it, down here we've got two trimmer pots and one of them controls the output level. So you can adjust the output level so it's closer to like a modular synth level, or you can turn it down so that it's closer to like, you know, an like if you're using it with an amplifier or something to get more closer to that level. You can also change the VCA threshold if your um, VCA is letting too much uh, of the bleeding sound through, you can change that with the other trimmer pot. On this side, it's got a trigger and a pitch in, and on this side, of course, is the output. So with those all being eighth inch mono jacks and the fact that you have that trimmer, this really would pair well with a modular synth. So if you had like a small Eurorack system and you want to add some drum sounds, this would actually pair really nicely with it. Um, but in addition, because of these two jacks, you could use it with any sequencer. <laughs> And with every drum synth, I mean, realistically, when you have this many controls, it just doesn't just have to be a drum synth. You can kind of use it as more of like a bass line synth or even a melody line synth as well, especially when you've got control over these. So there we have it, folks. That's the drum synth from Racket. I really, really like this kit. I would definitely recommend this to anybody who is curious. And as I said before, it can pair well with like a modular synth, or it's just a fun little thing to have on its own. And since it's battery operated, you can take it anywhere with you. Now. Real quick, I do have this, Racket sent me this as well, and I don't know how well you can see the picture on there, but the picture looks very similar. This is the metal synth. It's actually very similar to the drum synth. So stay tuned for a future video. I'm gonna build this one, and then I'll probably do a side-by-side -side on them just so you can hear the differences if you're curious and or for one or the other. Uh, additionally, Racket sent me a couple more kits that I'm going to give away to you guys. So stay tuned for a giveaway that will be coming soon. Thanks for tuning in today. If you really like the stuff that I do on this channel, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys soon.